Welcome to another video in the graph series. Consider these cases. Suppose you have a complex graph with you and a toy is hidden in one of the nodes. So you would obviously have to go through all the nodes in the graph to find your toy. Or suppose you're visiting all the cities and figuring out that, okay, what all cities are perfect for you to conduct something or anything like that, right? So don't you think a very common problem in graph is going to be visiting all the nodes in the graph or touching all the nodes in the graph. Now this visiting all the nodes is called traversal in a graph, which you must have heard a lot. But this seems like a very common use case, right? That there are a lot of nodes, I want to visit them in a systematic manner, make sure that I don't miss out any nodes and I visit all of them. So that is what we are going to be solving today. Before we move ahead, I would just like to take a moment to remind you to be consistent and make sure you do not miss any videos in the graph series. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. You will also stay motivated and you have no idea how much your support will mean to me. There's so much of free content available on the channel. There's HLD, LLD, DSA, Advanced C++, tutorials, mock interviews and so much more. So if you think I deserve your support, please subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. And there's obviously a bunch of stuff that I cannot do on YouTube, like mock interviews, live interactive classes. So we have educourses.com. We have live courses, self-paced courses with live doubt solving support, which both of them, we have mock interviews and we have a lot planned in LLD, HLD, Advanced, C++, DSA, and so much more, you have no idea. So if you want me to be part of your further learning journey process, Please check it out. The link is in the description. And now let's continue. Let's just start with a simple tree. Now you would think why a tree, right? Have you forgotten that trees are also graphs? Basically trees are simple version of graph or special version of graph. We have already discussed this in previous video. So to understand in very simple terms, let's look at this simple binary tree. So now if I give you the task that you have to visit all the nodes, right? How would you do that? Like just think of it logically forget all the algorithms, how would you make sure that you don't miss any nodes and you systematically make sure that you're visiting all of them. Now, one obvious way is to go like this, that okay, I visited all the nodes over here, I visited all the nodes over here, I visited all the nodes over here, like that, correct? So this is one way to visit all the nodes. Another way would be that I would start going down like this, that I visit this, then I visit this, then I visit this, I come back, then I come here, I visit this, I go back, I go back, and then I visit this, and then I go over here, I visit this, I go back, I come over here, and I visit this. Now, these are two systematic ways. Basically, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything, right? So in one way in which you are going like this, what are you doing? You're going level-wise, or you're going breadth-wise, or you're going along the width. And this algorithm that we'll be doing to just visit the nodes level-wise, or breadth-wise, or width-wise, is called nothing but BFS, which is spread for search. And the other algorithm in which you were going deep and then coming back, going deep, then coming back and then again going back, going deep, visiting the children, going back, going back. So here you were going deep, basically you were going along the depth and that is why this is called DFS or depth first search. Now these two algorithms, PFS and DFS are probably the most important topics in both trees and graphs. Here we have already seen that BFS, DFS can be applied to trees also and to graphs also. Basically trees are also graphs. So we have to understand that how is BFS, DFS different in graphs and in trees? First of all, this also we will do. Secondly, we will try to understand with intuition that how BFS and DFS can be implemented. But in very simple terms, in BFS you go breadth wise or level wise or width wise versus in DFS you go depth wise, you go deep down a branch, then you go back, you go deep down a branch and then you go back. Even if you have not studied trees, it is completely fine because once you understand and develop the intuition for BFS and DFS in graphs, actually trees become a lot more easier. So let's take a few examples. For example, this is a simple binary tree right now, correct? Let's make it a bit more complex and let's add one more node like this. Now suppose I have to do traversal over this graph. Now I can do either BFS or DFS, both is fine. Let's start with a simple DFS. What do we do in DFS? We go deep, right? So I start from this node. I go deep, so I visit this child over here or this neighbor and then I come over here and then I visit this neighbor. I go back, I go back, then I visit the other neighbor which is this, so I visit this neighbor. I come over here and I end up visiting this again. So now the problem is that I would already visited this node and I am ending up visiting it again. So there was this one path and there is this another path. 
I am visiting the same node again and again, which I don't want to do, right? Because in a traversal, I want to visit every node exactly once in a systematic manner. I don't want to end up visiting the same nodes again and again. Let's take another example. Suppose this is a simple graph, right? This is also a graph. This is a cyclic graph. So suppose I start from this node, I visit its neighbor, I come over here, then I visit its neighbor, I come over here, again its neighbor, I come over here, I come over here, I come over here. I am stuck in an infinite loop. Right? So there will be a lot of cases, there might be cycles or there might be simple cases like this where there is no cycle but still you are ending up visiting the node multiple times. Now this will be a problem that will be there in graphs. The only difference in BFS and DFS is the order in which you are visiting the nodes. You, you, in, in BFS you are visiting the nodes level wise versus in DFS you are going deep wise. Right? Only the order and the way in which you run the algo is different otherwise the intention is same what you want to do, you want to visit every node exactly once in systematic manner. So the outcome of both of those is similar. Only the order is different, correct? So in both the cases, you will end up having this problem that you will end up visiting the same nodes again and again. So every time you do BFS, TFS in a graph, you have to do this. You have to have another visited array or a set. Basically, you just have to mark every node as visited. Now in terms of code, you could be using an array or a set or a map or you could be using any way. Basically, you just have to tell that have I visited this node or not. So how some people will do, for example, if these nodes were marked 1, 2, 3, 4, they will make an array. Uh, okay, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Initially, none of them are visited, so I will mark them as false. And then I will start visiting them that this is visited, so I will mark it as true. Now this is visited, I will mark it as true. Now this is visited, I will mark it as true, right? Now I will go back, I will go back, then I will come over here. Now this is visited, I will mark it as true. Then when I come to 4, I will see, oh, this was already visited. So I will not visit it again. So that is how you can use the visited array. Or you could also use a set. Basically, you will have a set where initially there is nothing. And as you visit the nodes, you will just keep putting them into this set. So for example, here the nodes were named, say, 1, 2, 3. So as you visit this, you're going to put it into the set. If you visit this, you're going to put it into the set. If you visit this, you're going to put it into the set. And then when you go back to 1, you're not going to visit it again because it is already there in the visited set. So this seems like a very obvious logical thing to do, right? You just have to mark the nodes as visited as you visit them. And still, if it is not clear, don't worry about it. We are going to look at the code. We are going to do so much of it that it will be completely clear. But every single time you do either of the algorithms, either BFS or DFS in a graph, you always have to make sure that you mark the nodes as visited. Now, marking the nodes, you will see various codes. Some people will use array, some people will use set, some people will use map. That doesn't matter. The main point is that you should understand the logic and the reason behind it. The reason is that I do not want to keep uh, visiting the same nodes again and again and I don't want to end up in a forever loop. I want to visit every single node only once in a systematic manner and that is why I'm going to mark my nodes as visited. Now that we have understood that we definitely need a visited array or a set or some way to mark the nodes as visited in a graph, now let's try to develop the intuition for BFS and DFS. Let's get started with DFS. So in DFS, as I said, as the name suggests, it is called depth first search. So we are going to go deep. Let's just start from this node A. You could be starting from any node or it could be given in the question that you have to start from a particular source node. So right now, if I start from this node A, then I visit its neighbors, right? So who's, who are the neighbors? The neighbors are B and F. Let's go one by one. So I visit the neighbor B. But before visiting the neighbor F, what I have to do is I have to go deep down the B and finish all the neighbors of B and then go back and then only I can visit F because we are not going level wise. So if I was going level wise, I would have visited like this. But here, what am I doing? I am going deep, right? So after visiting B, I have to make sure that I first visit all the neighbors of B. So after visiting B, I'm going to go and visit C. After visiting C, who are the neighbors of C? It's D, so I'm going to visit D. After that, I'm going to visit E. So I visited E. Now, are there any other neighbors of E? No, right? So I am done with E. So now what I need to do is I need to come back and see, are there any other neighbors of D? Like for example, maybe there was another neighbor like over here with X, right? Then I would have had to visit X over here, right? So what I have to do essentially is I have to go back, right? So it is like, I am done with E, so now I can remove it. So now basically I am, I have visited like this. Now I've already visited E, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it and see, are there any other neighbors of D? 
Now there are no other neighbors of D also, so I will remove it. Are there any other neighbors of C? No, so I will remove it. Are there any other neighbors of H? Right. There, are there any other neighbors of B? Right. There are. So there is one H over here. So I'm going to add H. Right? I'm going to add H. Right. Again, are there any other neighbors of H? If there were, I would have visited those. I would have gone deep down. But now there are no. Uh, there are no other neighbors of H. So I'm going to just pop it, and then I am going to come back to B. I'm basically going back and then again from B, I'm done with B now. I have visited all the neighbors of B. So I'm going to go back to A and then see who was the other neighbor of A that was F, right? So now I'm going to go deep down the other branch, which is the F branch. And then I'm going to visit G, right? So there's going to be F and G. So this is how I'm making sure that I'm visiting all the nodes exactly once. Now note over here, that once I did like this, A, B, C, D, E, I had to pop, right, that I'm done with E, then D, then like this. So whatever I visited last, right, whatever came last, last in, I removed that first. So it was first out. What is last in, first out? Which data structure can we use? So you are thinking, right, we can use a stack. So it will essentially look like this. So I hope you have understood the intuition behind it because we have to pop it back. Now, this was the last element and now there are no further neighbors of this. So I can basically pop it back, right? So if this is a stack like this, I will start from A, push B, C, D, E. And now I, once I'm done with E and all the neighbors of E, I'm going to pop it. Once I am done with D and all the neighbors of D, I'm going to pop it. Once I'm done with all the neighbors of C, I'm going to pop it. Once I'm done with all the neighbors of B, I'm going to pop it. Once I'm done with all the neighbors of A, I'm going to pop it. Right? Before popping, obviously there's F and there's G and then we are going to pop G and F and then we are going to pop out A. Right? So basically in DFS, we need last in, first out and that is why we use a stack. So that is why in a lot of places, you will see a lot of people using simple recursion. Why? For DFS? Because in recursion, what we essentially use is called the recursive stack. So there are two ways to go about in the DFS. We will look at the code. Don't worry about it. We will dry run the code so many times it will be completely clear. But if you think about it in simple terms, we need a stack. Now we could either make the data structure stack and use it, or we could use the recursive stack because when we do recursion, a recursive stack is created for us by itself. So either we can use the recursive stack or we can create the stack for ourselves. So uh, in most of the places when you see the DFS code, we will be using the recursive stack itself and we will see the code for both adjacency matrix, adjacency list, everything is going to be super clear. We are going to dry run also. But I hope this part is clear that we are going deep down and then we are going back up. So once you are, once you are deep down, you need to mark all the nodes as done that now I'm done with this. So you're going to pop it. Now let's take another last case before this, before moving to BFS. Basically, this is a quick reminder that in graphs, whenever you do either BFS or DFS, you have to keep marking the nodes as visited also. Let me show you how. So we are going to be using a stack here. Uh, the only change that I'm going to do in this graph is I'm going to connect this and probably this and this and suppose this because the graph can be complex, right? So I've created a few more edges and probably it could be like this also, but okay, let's not overdo it. So let's just start from A and I mark this as visited, okay? Then I visit the neighbors of it one by one. One neighbor is B, so I start from B. Then I visit the neighbors of B, which are C, H and E. I have to go one by one. So I start from C, I visit C. Then I go to the neighbor of C, which is D. I visit D. Then I go to the neighbor of uh, D, which is E, right? Now the neighbor of E is C also. So should I visit C or not? No, right? Because I have already marked it as visited. So if something is already visited, I'm not going to visit it again. I'm not going to put it into the stack. What is the other neighbor of E? It is H. So I'm going to mark this as visited. Now I'm going to see the neighbors of H. There is B. Now B is also visited. Actually, I could see E also, right? E is also visited. So both of them are visited. So who are the other neighbors of H? They are F and G. So I'm going to put F in the stack. Now, who are the neighbors of, stack of F? That is G. So I'm going to put G also in the stack, right? I'm going to mark that as visited. All the neighbors of G are now visited. So I'm going to pop it. All the, visit, all the neighbors of F are visited. I'm going to pop it. Similarly, I'm going to pop, 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 pop like this. So here you see in one DFS traversal itself, I was able to visit all the nodes. Why? Because the graph is, has a lot of cycles. So I was able to visit like this, that I went like this 
I visited, I visited, I visited. I could have gone back and gone back, but I'm not going to visit the same nodes like this. I want to visit all the nodes exactly once. So that is why the visited area or set or map is very, very important in BFS and DFS when it comes to graphs. Now let's try to develop the intuition for BFS. To develop the intuition for BFS, let's take this example. So here we need to visit the nodes level wise. So I start from A and I'm going to start storing my answer, suppose over here. Okay, and I visit A first. Now I visit all the neighbors of A because I have to go level wise. So I visit all the next level, right? So all the neighbors of A, basically B and C. Now the problem in BFS is that after visiting B and C, how do I go to D? Because how was I supposed to go to D? It is neighbor of B, right? So how do I do that? Now that is a tricky part over here, correct? So now what we could do is that once we are done with all the neighbors of A, we could remove it from whatever data structure we have put it in and we can put it in our answer. Now whatever is the first node that we had put in our data structure, we are going to take that and visit all the neighbors of that guy. So all the neighbors of B are what? D and E. So I'm going to visit the neighbors D and E. So now that I'm done with B, I'm going to remove it from the data structure and put it in my answer. Then I'm going to take this next, the first one that is there, which is C. I'm going to take all the neighbors of C, which is basically F. And I'm done with C. I'm done with all the neighbors of C. I'm going to remove it and put it in the answer. Similarly, I will go to D. There are no more neighbors of D. I'm done with it. I'm going to remove it and put it in the answers. I'm going to come to E. And then see who are the neighbors of E. So it is G. So I'm going to put it over here. Okay. Now that I'm done with all the neighbors of E, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove it and put it in the answer. Done with F, visited all the neighbors. Also, there are no other neighbors. I'm going to put it in the answer. Done with all. So G. Now, if you see this, this is level order. How? A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. So I ended up going level order wise. But what I had to do in this data structure was that whatever node I was first putting in, that was the one that I was first taking out. Like A was the first node that I popped out or I removed from the data structure, right? So basically here we followed first in, first out. So don't worry if it is still not clear, we are going to dry run this for so many cases, it will be completely clear. But first in, first out, we need a queue, as many of you must have already guessed. So yes, in DFS, we use a stack. In BFS, we use a queue. In both, we mark them as visited. And we are going to keep seeing this again and again. And in the next video, what we are going to do is we are going to pick up just one question. And in, the, in that question, the graph can be represented by adjacency matrix and adjacency list, right? So I'm going to do both BFS and DFS on the adjacency matrix also and on the adjacency list also. So there are going to be four videos to solve just one question and we're going to be writing the code in both C++ and Java. So it is going to be very, very interesting because now we are finally getting started with code and we're going to write so many variations. You will realize that so many variations of solutions are possible just for one question. So it's going to be super interesting and I hope you develop the intuition this is nowhere like finishing BFS, DFS. This is just the developing the intuition part and making sure that you truly understand that why we need to mark the nodes as visited. And we are going to start with the code and we are going to dry run and everything is going to be completely clear. Just show up and make sure you watch the next few videos as well. And for that, you have to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon. I'm working really hard and I'm making sure that I explain everything in a lot of detail. And if you like my work, please do subscribe. Please do hit the notification bell icon and do check out EduCourses. The link is in the description. And I hope to see you next time.